Welcome back to our series about tie knots. In this video, I'm going to show you how to tie the Windsor knot. In the late 20s, the Prince of Wales uh, was one of the most popular, most stylish, and most photographed men in the world. And he decided to wear big tie knots. And so the term Windsor knot appeared, which stood for a big tie knot. Interestingly, the Duke of Windsor actually never wore this knot. As he said in his biography, a family album, which is very interesting because he talks a lot about his clothes. Let me read you the quote. The so-called Windsor knot in the tie was adopted in America at a later date. It was, I believe, regulation wear for GIs during the war, when American college boys adapted it too. But in fact, I was in no way responsible for this. The knot to which the Americans gave my name was a double knot in a narrow tie, a slim jim, as it's sometimes called. It is true that I myself have always preferred a large knot as looking better than a small one. So during the 1920s, I devised, in conclave with Mr. Sanford, a tie always of the broad variety, which was reinforced by an extra thickness of material to produce this effect. As far as I know, this particular fashion has never been followed in America or elsewhere. So as you can see, the Duke of Windsor created the size of the tie knot with the interlining and with the fabrics he used, not with a knot. And this is just another proof that it's not just a knot, it's the tie, the silk, the interlining, and it all plays together in the size and the look of the knot. That being said, in terms of size, the Windsor knot is one of the biggest tie knots out there. At the same time, it's also very popular. But what's important to understand is that in order to tie a Windsor knot, you should A, get a tie that is longer than the tie knots you use for other ties, and B, it should be thinner simply because it's such a big knot. So here you see me wearing a very thin matter silk tie by Fort Belvedere with Paisleys, and the knot is still rather big. I think it's very popular because of its symmetry, um, although personally, I'm not a huge fan of it. Nevertheless, here is how you tie it. You want the slim end on your right and the wide end on your left. The slim end should be about a hand and a half above your waistband. If you have a shorter tie, it needs to come up much further. So you'll have to experiment with it to see what works. Wide end goes from the left to the right, up here. You pinch it and take the bottom end and come through from here and pull it through. And then you go to your left side. Now switch hands and move the long wide part around to the right side, come up and go through the hole in the back and pull it down. So what's happening here, as you can see, is you have two knots, one, two. You pull it a little tight and you bring it the long end, the wide end, to your left side, and again up, pull it up, and you see the knot forms. Now, like usual, bring the wide end through the knot, gently pull, gently pull, and if you want a dimple, you've got a pinch on top, and pull it gently through. If you like the look, pull it up and adjust. As you can see, this knot is very symmetrical and it's very wide. It forms this triangular shape and that's why you want a wide cutaway spread collar to accommodate this knot. With a classic or medium spread collar, you run into troubles because the collar is gonna cover the edges, which looks not really advantageous. You're much better off with a four in hand knot or a Kelvin or a Pratt rather than the full Windsor knot. Now, what happens if you use a thick tie? I'll show you. Here I have a longer wool blend tie from Fort Belvedere with red herringbone, and uh, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll tie the Windsor knot. Now, this is what the Windsor knot looks like with a thick tie. It's basically like it eats my face. Personally, I don't like that look. If you like it, go for it. But always bear in mind, full Windsor knots look better with a slim, long tie. 
Oftentimes, I see shorter men wear a Windsor knot because the only way for them to get their long ties to the right length is to choose a bigger knot. However, that looks often awkward because they have smaller heads and big knots, which just looks overwhelmingly wrong. Therefore, I created ties in three different sizes, some for short men, some for normal men, and some for tall men, so everybody can wear the right tie knot and the tie size that works best for their personality and their face, rather than having to come up with a gigantic knot so you achieve the right length. So if you're a shorter man or taller or a normal guy in terms of height, check out our shop. We have specific ties and specific lengths so you look your best. If you enjoy these how to tie a tie videos and how not to tie them, please sign up for our list and we'll send these videos right to your inbox. Thank you.